Hello, welcome to the show. Now, there's not many companies out there that are 45 years old, but we're delighted to be talking to one on the show today and the anniversary that they're celebrating this year. Yeah, so today we're delighted to welcome Ian Elliott from Camford. Hi, Ian, good to see you and thanks for joining us. So, so let's you. start by, uh, you know, how Camford came about and, and, and what the journey's been like. Yes, it uh, feels like a very long time nowadays, um, but I think mm. a very successful 45 years. Um, well, my background, very briefly, was that I read engineering at Diamond University, um, and yeah. I stayed in the Northeast uh, and joined the embryonic Metro Radio um, before it went on air, one of the original six right. commercial radio stations in Britain. And it was enormous fun uh, back in 74. Um, there was no established manufacturing industry with equipment. So it was a lot of you know, innovation and uh, adaptation, yeah. experimentation, an enormously uh, enjoyable time for lots of us who are fairly elderly now who were around then. I didn't see myself staying mm. in all that, that long. And uh, eventually came, it's boring. And I had this little idea that there might be a market for bits and pieces for radio stations, sort of things that I've been involved in buying for, trying to find for Metro. Um, and that's what I thought we'd do. So there's the origins of Canford. Okay. Except that yeah. um, I never really intended it would turn into the £17 million turnover company with 140 people uh, that it has done today. And it's been, uh, had some rough periods, but really a rather enjoyable journey. Um, yeah. We've got a great team of people. I think that the North East is a great place to run a business. Um, staff are yeah. very, staff retention is very high and they're very friendly, naturally friendly, and that comes over to the customers. And I think that's one of the things a lot of people have liked about what we've done uh, and the style in which we do it. Right at the beginning, I said, we weren't just going to be a box shifter, we would contribute original thought, and we've remained that to this day. And in fact, about 40% of what we do is our own manufacture these days. It's quite a high proportion. Um, right. People know us quite well now for... Uh, and the newest areas like fiber termination and the custom metal work we do down to our site in Dorset. Um, and, but it's been a, a journey that's a gentle transition over a long time. I mean, some of you watching this will remember the Canford catalog. Um, the, the 44 editions in total, I said that my tombstone might be a Canford catalog because I did all four, I created all 44 of them, paginated them, 24 pages back in 1981, <laughs> 1,500 in 2010, which was, it became impossible to manage after that. And we'd moved on in life. We'd moved on to websites and Canford's yeah. in-house developer website was doing a really remarkable job. We can do so much more on that website than we ever could in a book. So that was a, quite a big part of our life for a very long time. Um, we uh, we started off with two products, an acoustic table, which I've just retired this year because really it's they've sort of passed their sell-by date really. And we are now onto the fourth generation of automatic cable tester. But um, lots of other things have happened along the way. Some, you know, things largely forgotten. That's, that's one of the interesting things about Canford because we're in a long time. We remember the totally analog days before digital, before computers. And one of our earliest products was a tape splicing block, uh, a precision extrusion. Right. Uh, we sold hundreds of thousands of reels of splicing tape, broken splicing tape over the years. Um, things that have been and gone, like shifting pallet-fuls of Ampex recording tape. Um, we've mm. adapted to all of it, though, and the manufacturing has always found little niches. We acquired technical projects in 1985, our first acquisition, and the TechPro Intercom system is alive and well in its second generation now. Uh, 1995, we bought the Neil business, Northeast Audio Laboratories, well-known to people. Um, and that is the high-tech end of what Canford does, not just cable and connectors, the Neil interview recorders that are advertised very nicely for us by so many prime series producers, Line of Duty, things like that. Uh, really an icon, like our on-air sign, that's undergoing a redesign at the moment uh, after 30 mm. years of doing for that has worn out. So, all the time, the, the, the things that are developing and what we're doing. Um, 1992 was a big milestone when BBC decided to cease their own distribution operation, which is a catalogue function, and we took on that uh, and absorbed that into our 
what we do ourselves. And we've got 20,000 uh, live products on the system, uh, uh, a lot, lot bigger team, more sophisticated uh, in terms of product management and organization. Uh, we have a lot of business nowadays that requires a lot more compliance work uh, because we are not just in the conventional uh, broadcast live performance area. We have a lot of industrial business, do a lot in the oil and gas industry, particularly with subsea uh, vessels. We right. supply quite a lot of the nuclear power industry, the railway industry. So we're quite a diverse uh, collection, which keeps it interesting and, and, and keeps it good for staff. Yeah. I think you, you've met several of Canford's people at the exhibitions and they've talked to you about products. Um, of course. One of them. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to come on to just that. Um, yeah, we, we, and actually we've had, um, John on the show, uh, last year and he, he described himself as a lifer and, um, I'm, I'm sure, um, I'm, I'm not sure what number he is on the payroll, but I should imagine it's quite early. Um, I mean, tell us about the experience your staff have got, because it seems like the team behind Camford is crucial in what they can offer to your customers um, going yeah. forwards. Mm. We, we, I've always had a belief in in, in in the talents in young people, and right from the very beginning, we've employed people straight from school or college, and we continue to that, do that to this day. We do a lot of industrial apprenticeships and similar sorts of schemes. Um, yes, we've got um, some people around. John Driver has appeared on uh, in front of the camera for you. Uh, he's about employee number four, I think. Um, <laughs> and uh, another behind the scenes, Ryan Graham Lyon, who joined around the same time, who's uh, been in our production and product management area for quite some time. Um, yes, we have a lot of people. We've got, we believe, just about 2,000 person years of experience currently in the company. Um, we have no yeah. end of people who've got 10, 15 years. And yeah, that really helps the business in that we've got so much knowledge there um, and experience that's relevant and you know, being able to give, have sensible conversations with customers when they want something that isn't quite off the page, so to speak, um, or they've got a particularly specialised application and they need advice on how to do things. Mm. Um, and we've got the skills to design things. That the, the the team down in Portland came into being um, on the Isle of Portland, very close to the lighthouse, um, a company we acquired in 1999, 2000, and that we developed. Uh, they were a little metalworking business. We developed that into a very successful team of about 20, 25 people. Um, who are just focused on making metal products for our industry, nothing else. So you can do them a sketch drawing that says yes. three XLRs there, one, one Lemo, such and such there. They know what how to do it, and they can find errors mm. in custom drawings, which is really quite a nice thing to be able to do. But it's that experience of doing it such a long time. So that I mean that's great. The, the, the people is probably a lot of the reason why people cho choose to come and buy from Camford. But you mentioned the big blue book, the catalogue. It was it was it was uh, it caused a lot of a big stir when someone came and nicked the Camford catalogue off your shelf. It was it was you know you'd chase them down. Um, and yes, it's a piece of history. We've got the internet. But how important really was was that book to your development? Absolutely critical, without any doubt. Um, in the very earliest days, my first APRS exhibition in 1978, I had the two products and I had some single A4 sheets and a price list sheet. And I found over the coming mm. years that unless there were pictures, people didn't buy it. Um, but the thing that I was used to was the RS catalogue, which was one volume in those days, and the Farnell catalogue, and they were yeah. head-to-head against each other. Stock code, simple description, ring up, and it happens. And my set my target when I produced the first catalog that I want three catalogs on the engineer's desk within three years, RS Farnell and Canford, and us being the specialist. And I reckon I achieved yeah. that. And yeah, you're not the first person to comment about the value of the big block. And and it yes, oh. it was yeah. cost an enormous amount of money. Each edition towards the end were costing about a quarter million pounds uh, by the time we printed and distributed right. it. And it was very heavy. People didn't want to carry it anymore. And yeah, the, 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 but when we felt the type, the website had developed to the point where it was as good as a book, then it took over. And, and yes. that, that was that transition. Uh, there was going to be a 45th edition in 2012. We bought the paper 
35 tons of it, uh, but we gave up the struggle, I have to say, and uh, we've moved. Yeah, you, the, uh, to transition into the book, you have like a magazine, you have to hit a press date. With a website, it's continuous yeah. editing, continuous refreshing. You can do things quickly and introduce things next week if you want to. Uh, and that's a really big change. And having more people as well to do it uh, is a, a great improvement in my quality of life. So in going, going forwards, what's, uh, what's your strategy uh, for the future of Camford? Well, the recent, the recent change, which is fundamental to all of this, um, is that in December 2019, we completed the creation, which took about a year legally to do, um, creation of an employee-owned trust and the ownership of Canford. Um, the premier shareholders uh, sold their shares to the trust. That's the process. So the trust now owns Canford. The trust deeds say that Canford cannot be touched for 125 years. Uh, it can't be moved from the northeast. It can't be sold. That, for me, was so important because so the Fantastic. people that are there, the families I've got in the business and the team have been there so long, they know how to run the company really well. They know how to develop it. And I've seen so many cases now of the sad ones where um, founder owners and shareholders have had to sell out because they want to retire and some near disasters or obliteration of companies or Americans with grand ideas mm -hmm. that destroy the soul of a business. No, too much has gone into Canford over 45 years for that to happen. So Canford is absolutely secure. We've got a great management team. I'm around for a little bit longer um, and uh, <laughs> probably quite a lot longer actually. But um, the bit I enjoy yeah. doing is um, the technical engineering work I do, which is designing cables. It was something I discovered that there didn't seem to be many people who did that. And so I learned a lot about it a long time ago. And so now the interesting bit is talking to customers, finding and watching the technology, a bit of both, and, and looking at what we need to do uh, and producing nice deployable cables that will go 500 miles at 12G, you know, that kind of um, concept, <laughs> you know, what can you do? Um, and I enjoy doing that. And I hope I can be doing that for quite a lot longer. Mm. This this might have been a, a question we should have asked at the beginning, Ian, but how did the name Canford come about? <laughs> um, it, it, the name comes from Canford Magna, a little village in Dorset where my original business partner family lived. When we needed our startup money, a few thousand pounds, it wasn't very much. I couldn't find any in the northeast. Uh, I had no track record. And uh, Barclays Bank uh, in Wimborne knew my partner's family, and they were quite nice and lent us some money for a few years, <laughs> after which they decided we really ought to get a bank up in the northeast. And uh, so we moved. But that's that's where the name came from. We couldn't think of anything else any better, really. And it's stuck. It's unique. Um, and, and why not? It's as good as anything else. Yeah. No, brilliant. Thank you very much, Ian. It's been very good okay. to hear the history. And uh, you can find out more at camford.co.uk. And thanks to Media Proxy for their support of Kit Plus TV. And we'll see you next time.